Hello, everybody. This is Shauna from Two Gals Talk About Elvis, and I decided to do a segment that I have put away for a rainy day called Shauna's Corner. Now, in Shauna's Corner, I do opinionated shows on things I watch, things I've heard, what people say, blah, blah, blah. And I put it out there to you guys what my opinion and thoughts are about it. Well, tonight is no exception. I watched the um, interview with Navarone um, that Growing Up in Scientology did, A.A. Ron. And I just want to uh, talk to you about what I think about the interview. Okay? So, first, I want to say that this is a show uh, for entertainment purposes only, okay? This is only my opinion. You are getting an opinion from an Elvis fan and historian, all right? Let's do it on an Elvis historian perspective. All right, because we were getting perspectives, even the comment section on A.A. Ron's uh, video with Navarone in Growing Up in Scientology channel, where they didn't know the whole story. I could tell I was reading and um, they're just trying to piece things together. So I'm here to kind of put it in a perspective of an Elvis historian who has also researched Chrissy. And when I say Prissy, I mean Priscilla. So, all right. Okay. So, Navarone starts with talking about how in, like, middle school, he didn't have anything in Scientology. Marco, his father, um, told Prissy in early relationship that his son was not going to be involved in Scientology until... Navarone is at least 15 years old, so he can just, you know, make up his own mind. So he put his foot down, and Navarone was not in Scientology. But Navarone states, sometime middle school, high school, he was having some trouble. So it was in the middle of a school year where Priscilla couldn't transfer him to another school uh, so quickly, uh, another private school, and all that was available at the time was the Delphi, the Delphi school, the Scientology school for children. And he wasn't very happy about that, but he had to go because it was the only school that could take him short notice. So then Navarone starts telling A.A. Ron about his experiences in this Delphi school. Now, I did mention to you before how Lisa, at a young age, was subject to not just brainwashing, but also verbal abuse with a thing called, that they like to call in their teachings, bull baiting. I said that right, bull baiting. Now, in Scientology, bull baiting is, just think of it this way. It's a way of controlling your behavior when someone is not happy with you. So basically what it is, is you sit in one chair and someone you know or don't know sits in another chair. And this person is supposed to bash no matter what, bash, bash, bash this person. And while this person is bashing this person, person, this person is not allowed to respond, make any emotion or nothing. They're supposed to be a statue as they're taking in this abuse. It's a type of training. Now, in, in my point of view, it's a type of brainwashing because they're trying to condition you to not show emotion if someone is not happy with you. And when I mean bashing, guys, I mean people are putting you in a chair, looking you dead and straight in the eye. And think of it this way. They're doing it to children. Okay, not just adults, children. Lisa had to be subject to this at a very young age. Probably, what, 11, 12-ish? But anyways, Navarone got a taste of it in high school. And it's just verbal abuse. How much you can take without having any emotion. And they can say anything. No holds barred. Directly at you. And I'll repeat. This is done also with children. And Lisa was one of those children. So that's what's really hard about that. Also, 
besides bull baiting, um, Navarone talks about how they were doing the um, the spectrum or the bridge or going clear type thing with him, but he didn't really accept it at all because he wasn't in that school very long. He claims that he was in the school a year and a half, but he didn't let it get to his head. The only reason why he had to go someplace else was because he got busted at lunchtime with psychedelic mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So he's at Scientology Delphi School. He gets busted by the cops at lunchtime with psychedelic mushrooms. Now, when this happens, Navarone claims that he had to go to court, okay? And at his court hearing, he claims that his mother, Prissy, requests to the court that Navarone take his rehab at a Scientology rehab center. Now, if you guys are not um, sure what Scientology rehab is, it's basically pumping you up with so much vitamins, it's just making you sick. And then they're throwing you in a sauna to sweat it out for five hours a day. Yeah. So they start you out with like, a hundred milligrams of niacin, okay? And by the time you're done with this rehab, they're injecting you with about 5,000 milligram niacin. You heard me right. They start you with 100 milligram and pump you up, pump you up, pump you up, pump you up, switch you out, switch you out, switch you out, brainwash you, brainwash you, brainwash you. And then get you to 5,000 milligram of niacin. And that's a toxic level for anybody. It will make you sick. So I don't understand uh, how that is rehab. But Navarone also claims that Prissy knew that Marco Garibaldi was bad news when Navarone was three months old. Now, let's go over the timeline here. She meets Garibaldi in 1985, okay? Has a child with him in 1989, right? By 2005, they are separated, okay? He claims they separated one week before his 18th birthday because Priscilla couldn't even think about leaving Navarone all those 20-something years because she was afraid that Navarone would have visitation rights uh, with Navarone, and she was scared for Navarone's safety. Now you tell me. I never felt in my whole life reading or hearing other people talk about Chrissy of her being afraid of anything. So you guys tell me. That was very strange. He said she knew his dad was bad news in 1989, but she stayed with him, not because of love, but because she was scared of having his influence alone with Navarone. That's what Navarone claims. Also, Navarone claims in the interview that his dad and sister didn't get along, which is so odd to me. Because uh, because Marco Garibaldi helped Lisa Marie take uh, Spiegel to court and her mother for taking money off the top of the trust, you know, with whatever they wanted. Chrissy got like $900,000 a year that Lisa didn't know about. And Spiegel got like 600000 a year that Priscilla, that, excuse me, that Lisa didn't know about. So I'm just letting you know that that's how it was. That's how he says it was anyway. So I don't know. That's kind of odd. But I will say he says this, that in 2017, well, this is what Nav Navarone claims, okay? In 2005, Prissy and Marco split. 
okay? That means Lisa didn't have any contact. That means nobody had any contact with Marco for a while. They split. So 12 years goes by of silence for a while. But then, in 2017, 12 years later, right, that Navarone had a barbecue. And Marco came and Lisa Marie came. And he claimed that they got together because they hadn't seen each other in so long. And they hooked up talking about conspiring against his mother. Priscilla, and that he told them, he told his dad, no, if you do what you saying you're going to do with Lisa Marie, that's, 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 that's a line. You do that and I don't want nothing to do with you again. Well, here's the line. This was the conspiracy. This is the conspiring. Lisa Marie got information from Marco that night. Nobody knows what that information is because Navarone said he didn't know, but he kind of knew at the end. I'm going to tell you guys what the tidbit is. And if you're watching our show, Two Gals Talk About Elvis, we've covered this. Marco Garibaldi got, got to, you know, to Lisa Marie at the barbecue to tell her, hey, you know, uh, about 13 years ago, I heard your mother in a hush-hush conversation with Spiegel how they were going to take you for more, for money off the top the $900,000 a year and the $600,000 a year and they were trying to conspire and trying to talk her into selling the 85%. Now, that's what was happening. And that's what Marco told Lisa that night at the barbecue. Now, when Navarone found out that they were conspiring and actually going to do something and take Priscilla to court for stealing money from Lisa, Navarone said, I'm done with you. I'm done. That's, that's too much. So that's what Navarone claims. Okay. He also claims that he didn't know anything about his Brazilian roots. Nobody told him anything until, you know, later on, and it wasn't very long ago that he found out. But in newspaper articles and things, it already claimed Priscilla already knew. Like, everybody knew in the news that he was Brazilian. They would say um, Spanish, um, lover. But for some reason, they acted like they didn't know. It's kind of strange when the news media at the time knew he was Spanish origin, but for some reason, Priscilla just, I don't know. But Navarone claims that Priscilla knew since he was three months old that some, that his ex-wife, that Marco's ex-wife calls Priscilla up going, honey, your husband, I mean, your, your, your boyfriend that you just had a child with isn't who you think he is. And he claims that Priscilla was like, Oh, I just had a child with this person. I don't know what you're talking about or something like that and hang up, you know, but in the back of her mind, I mean, she knew, but then he claims that she stayed with this man, this con artist, knowing who he is because of the safety of Navarone. I don't know. It's just, that's what the interview, that's what Navarone says anyway. Um, he claims that he's going to move to Brazil. No, really, that's what he states in the interview. So maybe he's going to move to Brazil to be closer to his family. He explains that when he found out that he had family from Brazil, he, was, he talked to his father about it, asking him questions on why and how he has family in Brazil. And um, Marco tells him, lose my number and they haven't talked since so like he's been like mia now i'm going to tell you straight up he claims this that his mom is in that his mom initiated brainwashing and his dad also 
did his own type of brainwashing. So he does state that that Prissy did type of brainwashing on him, um, but he called it um, entitlement. He said, my mom initiated an entitlement brainwashing on me, and my father's father's side did his own type of brainwashing. So that's what he said on that. Um, also, Navarone claims that Prissy didn't want to marry Marco. Well, they, you know, that's just what Navarone says. But she stayed with him all those years. And the story she was giving the... What's crazy is the story she was giving the media all those years that she was with Marco is that they were in love. Could it be that she lied to the media? I mean, because Navarone states that she knew since he was three months old that Marco was bad news. So which is it? Because I have articles from how she talks about Marco in the um, early 90s. And she talks like they love each other and respect each other very much. So which one is it, Prissy? Which one? Which one is it? Um, let's see. Let me turn the page here because this gets interesting. Navarone, and I've also, I've also covered this too, Navarone claims that if you're rich in Scientology with entitlement, they slack on the rules, that anything goes. Like the rules that they place on the middle class Scientologists aren't the same rules that they put on the rich elitist Scientologists. So they were allowed to be with people that were SP. They were allowed to associate with people that were anti-Scientologists. Uh, they could drink. They could do other things. It's okay. They're rich. They funnel the money into Scientology. So they can do whatever they want. So as you can tell, in the real world, just like in the real world, the rich have one side of justice. And us normal people have another. So I guess it's good to be rich. You get you get you get away with with all kinds of things, right? But that's what Navarone claims how they got away with so many um, insubordinations with the church throughout the years is because when you're rich, like with the Presley name, you can do anything. So that's probably why. Um, he claims that. That the whole family, even Prissy, was done with Scientology by 2012 um, because Lisa Marie goes straight into uh, one of the Scientology centers and um, basically threatens David saying, don't F with me and my family and I won't F with you and walked out. And, and that, that's what caused her to quit. And then he says that night. Lisa Marie and Priscilla had a family meeting with everybody else claiming that they were done. They weren't going to say it out loud too much, but they were going to be done with it. So according to Navarone, Chrissy's even been out since 2012 and Riley too. So hmm. even A.A. Ron in this interview was very surprised by this because he really thought that Priscilla and um, Riley were still loyal. Scientologist. So he was even surprised by that revelation that they were not in it anymore. So <laughs> I don't know, guys. Um, Navarone claims that he was not close with Ben and he was not close with Lisa. In fact, he claimed that um, Lisa and him were never close because. And he says this, but he says it in a low voice, but he does say it. He goes, Lisa and I were never close because she was never close to mom. So it shows you that Lisa and Priscilla were never close. So that's why Navarone wasn't close to Priscilla. I mean, to Lisa. So that's what he, that's why he claims he wasn't close with his sister because his sister wasn't close with the mom. I'm sure there were other issues, but he could only be able to say so much, I'm sure. But that's what he claims. And there's another thing. He says that um, 
hold on, I turn the page. Okay. He also claims that he might have more siblings, that his father, Marco Gal Garibaldi Garcia, um, had more children. In fact, he thinks that he had two children that were twins while he was still in a relationship with his mom. So there might be more siblings from California, the state, and there was possible cheating, cheating in this relationship that Priscilla had with Marco. Um, he also claims that Prissy and Lisa weren't close. That's why he wasn't close to Lisa. I already said that. He claims that Lisa was anti-psychotic drug and anti-drug until mid-40s. And that's the cause of Lisa not being close with him. But we all know through the history of Lisa Marie and her trials and tribulations that in her early years, she did exper experiment with drugs um, from the ages of, I believe it was uh, 12, uh, no, 13 to 16. She ran away. She did drugs. She was on cocaine. I mean, that's why her mother, when she was a teenager, put her foot down, had Scientology sent her. Celebrity Center kind of kidnapped Lisa Marie and put her in a rehab at the Celebrity Center on the top floor. So I don't think, um, I'm not going to put this against Navarone. Maybe they weren't close and he doesn't know about Lisa Marie's past drug use when she was a teenager. Maybe that's it. But he claims it was in her 40s. But he also said something else that was really surprising to me. He said that when Lisa was in her mid-40s, she uh, started experimenting with drugs. And the person of choice that she would experiment drugs with and have fun with was none other than Kid Rock. Kid Rock? Yeah, the MO fits. It's Kid Rock. But wow. Wow. Do you guys have any pictures of Lisa Marie with Kid Rock? I would like to see some. Okay, also, A.A. Ron tells Navarone that Lisa was leading the charge against Scientology, but Navarone claimed that the only thing Lisa did in charge of science, leading the charge against Scientology was having a temper tantrum at David Miscavige at one of the centers. Um, so that's that. Um, let me see. Here we go. Sorry, I have so many notes. Um, A.A. Ron asked him if, well, A.A. Ron asked Navarone what did his mom think when he told her he was going to do an interview with Growing Up with Scientology. And Navarone goes, she just went, oh, really? And just gave him like a weird look, but nothing else. So I don't know. Um, then A.A. A. Ron asked Navarone, why does your mother in media still claim she's a Scientologist then? when you say she quit in 2012 and then navarone says that he thinks that his mother is um still afraid of scientology so she claims scientology as hers because she's afraid of the repercussions plus he mentioned the irony of Prissy Pants being afraid. How crazy is that, A.A. Ron thought? Because we all know that Scientology blackmails their um, rich, <laughs> um, rich members because uh, what they know against them will get them more money. Um, it's a known fact here, guys. Um, Plus, A.A. Ron mentions to Navarone that all this is strange because Prissy is a behind-the-scenes, 
power player in Scientology, that he believed that Tom Cruise's career was suffering and that Priscilla Presley alone saved Tom Cruise's career. That's when Navarone laughs and goes, Chrissy doesn't like Tom Cruise. So I've heard that a lot. I've heard a lot of people said they don't like Tom Cruise. So, yeah. I, but he claims Chrissy doesn't like Tom Cruise. So how could she help save his career? So there was that. Um, he asked, A.A. Uh, a. Ron asked Navarone if um, his mother was ever a diehard Scientologist. And he claims that she did listen to the Dianetic tapes in the car. And she did believe in, in it as L. Ron Hubbard owned it and ran it. But when L. Ron Hubbard left and David Miscavige took over, that's when she knew it was changed and she didn't like it and she wasn't into it quite as much. So it was easy for her to quit in 2012. Um, this is a part I didn't like at all. He asked him what he thought about being Lisa's brother or knowing Lisa or something like that. And Navarone says, it's not a privilege. It's not a privilege to know Lisa. That was just awful. Come on, guys, you have to agree. If you watch the video, let me know in the comment section what you think about that part. But he says it uh, right there that it was, it's not, it was not a privilege to know his sister, Lisa. That's a shame that he would say that. Um, let me think. Let me see if I, is there anything else? Oh, yes. Um, he claims that, uh, like I said, he, he claimed that he didn't go to the private funeral of Lisa. He went to the, the public funeral. He went there by choice. He didn't want to go to the private. They weren't close. And when he said that, he laughed. We were close. <laughs> I'm not going to her private funeral. <laughs> we were close. She just died, man. Have a heart. Also, um, a. a Ron says, well, Prissy ran it. She, she planned it. Why didn't you go? And he goes, did she? So I guess Prissy didn't have any hands on the private funeral or the public. I bet you it was Riley. I have to guess who it had to have been Riley because people were just assuming it was Prissy. But Navarone claims otherwise. Um, one more thing. No, two more things, and I'm done. Um, he claims that Riley is an angel. Um, she's the only one in the Presley family that doesn't have narcissism. He said that. And he also said, Riley is the only one on his mother's side that he truly, truly loves. He said the twins, but they need to grow some more to know him. The last question that A.A. Ron asked him was from a um, commentator. And it was, is your mother really going to be buried at Graceland? And Navarone answers, if she wants to be. I didn't make up that deal. <laughs> oh, that's it, guys. I I don't know. I'm, I'm livid, really, about what all he had to say about Lisa. I mean, come on, how much did he hate her? He also claimed that when she got drunk, and she got drunk a lot because Scientologists love to drink. They're against everything else, but drinking is okay. But he claims that when Lisa got drunk, she would find someone around her and she would pluck them, like pick them out and pick on them, like how bad their life is and how they suck. So I don't know. All this stuff seems to me like bashing Lisa, lifting his mother up, lifting himself up, bashing his real father, which he was a con man. but. I don't know, guys. I really didn't appreciate how he talked about Lisa. You know that Lisa was like a sister from another mister to me. And I'm sure to a lot of you guys, too. We watched her grow up. And we love Elvis. Therefore, we love his daughter. I don't understand 
why they were estranged, but I bet you it had a lot to do with the relationship between Lisa and her mother. Even Navarone claimed they were not close. You know what I'm saying? So you guys take that to the bank. But they weren't close. Even Navarone said. But anyways, guys, I hope you found this entertaining. Um, I just had to get it off my chest. As far as Navarone is concerned with me, truly, I just feel sorry for the guy. To me, anybody raised by Priscilla, I mean, has to be messed up. But that's just my opinion, okay? But I will say this. Just the way he talks about Lisa. He's not number. He, he's not even close to someone I want to even follow or care about, you know. But I thought maybe you guys want to know, play by play, what he said on growing up in Scientology with A. A. Ron. All right, guys. Well, I better go. I will be uh, live on Friday night. Rhonda and I still have a show sometime this week, but she was sick tonight, so I thought I would do this for you guys tonight to make up for it. Okay. So this is Shauna's Corner. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. And there might be more Shauna Corners in the future, okay? We'll see what happens. Okay, TCBTLC. God bless y'all, and you know what? I'll see you on the other side.